Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, I have a confession to make today. Uh, I have kept this secret for a long time. I'm actually Ukrainian. Like I checked my DNA, you know, the, it, it really, really, I'm 100% Ukrainian blood. You know, it went on for like 2000 years. Uh, you no, know, I have Ukrainian blood. You no, know, it's tracing back for 2000 years. It's, it's, it's really difficult, you know. Um, so you know and Zelensky actually is my half brother so so I'm also a Jew also a Ukrainian and uh yeah slap by Ukraine Yeah, I actually have no good jokes. Uh, I know it's April's full. Um, I I struggled to 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 really think of a good joke. So anyway, uh, uh, just just imagine that I actually made a really good one, and uh, now I kill laughter. Laugh, ha ha ha. Okay, good. Uh, so good job. We 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 finished that April's full no thing, and uh, so let's start off with the front line. Frontline changes report. Oh, that's lame, man. That's, that's so cheesy. Okay, let's start off with Frontline changes report. And um, we're going to start off with Novi. Over on the east of Chastif, yeah? So uh, there is front, some frontline changes uh, according to the Ukrainian mapping, Deep State UA. So this is Chastif, yeah? And the Russian forces have captured this tree line around here. Uh, this is Novi. So, uh, so... As the, this this you may see this called Canal District or Novoye or Novi uh, in Ukrainian and the Russian forces taken this tree line and uh, this is by the Ukrainian mapping so the Russians are inching closer and closer uh, Ukrainians probably have this tree line as well as the forest region around here it's going to take some time uh, to un, uh, un, unseat or you no know, to to eject the Ukrainian forces from this area here because uh, forests are usually really hard to fight. Uh, so as we can see from the Sedevansky forest tree, the fighting takes forever. So we shall see how this goes. But that's a mosquito. Uh, so so it's, it's it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You know, uh, it, it was a drone strike. It was a drone strike. So uh, so that's all for uh, Novi. Another frontline change is over at the Vodian region in the Adyevka front. This is Adyevka city. Uh, Donetsk city is around here. So this is Povomaiske and uh, Vodian. So Vodian is this very, very long, you know, very, very long city. Let me draw. So it, it looks like this. Like, like this, you know, then. Yeah, this, this, this is Vodian. And uh, if, and then, you know, it, it's a happy, happy little, you know, millipede. So this millipede uh, is now uh, rumored to be under Russian control with dual location of uh, Russian forces attacking and planting a flag on the western part of Vodian almost at the very end of it. And uh, based on uh, Russian mapping, uh, this millipede is now under Russian control. Uh, yeah, you, you, it really depends on uh, how. Uh, I'm not declaring this a capture just yet uh, this, because this is under Russian claims. Uh, but of course, we do have the geolocations uh, to show that, you know, indeed, a huge part of this is actually uh, now Russian uh, taken. Uh, however, it's not going to be secured because the Ukrainian forces still have, you no know, uh, huge part of uh, the, the northern half of Povomaiske. So it, without Povomaiske uh, taken, uh, then uh, Vodian cannot be secured. So this is what it is. And uh, luckily, I was checking the audio you know, and, and recording. Like I was worried that you know, after making all these jokes, then I didn't rec record. Okay, so uh, good save. And uh, so th then we have oh, Tonenke. So the, the, the arrangement. Uh, further up north, there is a frontline change at Tonenke based on Russian uh, Joe located uh, along this area here to which the Russian forces actually uh, launched an attack uh, in the north western part of Tonenke and uh, this extends Russian control over this area here as they hit uh, in the direction of uh, what is it up there? Uh, Umanske. So they are heading towards Umanske in this direction and uh, they have taken more grounds. So we will continue to monitor and uh, see how these uh, continue to progress uh, for for this front line. The Russians are indeed making a gradual progress, you know, 
on and on. And the last frontline change is over at Novo Mihailivka, which is a huge amount of changes in this area here. So first thing first is we cover the center, central part uh, based on uh, based on uh, this Novo Mihailivka, by the way, uh, based on Russian mapping, uh, they have claimed this line and also taken this area here, uh, this uh, southern southern part, uh, some industrial area. So this I've I have already, you know, uh, noted this for a long time ever since the geolocation of the Russian forces in these two area here as I said that in some other mapping it's going to look like this and uh, so now that uh, Rybas mapping uh, of Novo Mihailivka have came out uh, is indeed you know, around around this line so we will continue to monitor the Ukrainian forces continue to hold the western part of Novo Mihailivka uh, however this is not the only thing Based on uh, the uh, geolocation, uh, Russian forces have been geolocated along this southwestern part of Novo Mihailivka, over this area here. And uh, with the Russian front line looking something like this, which means that the Russian forces have continued to push west as usual uh, to continue to put pressure on the Ukrainian forces. Previously, the Russians were heading in the northern part. They were attacking, you know, in this area here in the northern part. Now they are heading in the southern part. So... We'll continue to see how this progress. The Russian forces are geolocated in the southwestern part. And this area here it looks really you no know, sus, uh, suspicious. Not sure what's the strategy right now. Uh, could they be actually you know attacking in this direction into the rear, and are cut off the road, just south of Kar uh, Paraskovievka? There is a possibility, and uh, we shall see. We shall see. Uh, how this progress and I believe this is all the frontline changes report and uh, going to the strategy and tactical reporting uh, first thing first uh, the uh, Russian defense ministry reported heavy uh, missile strike again the previous one was on the 29th of March two, so two days later they uh, they attack again this time around they are targeting energy facilities as well as gas production um, and they also mentioned about uh, this defense industry enterprises for manufacture and repair of weapons uh, was disrupted uh, so you no know, by this missile strike so they claim the goal of the strike was achieved I'm not sure how they can confirm that because you can you do not necessarily know if you actually hit the target uh, yeah or you got shot down over the target you know so uh, if you look at Ukrainian uh, reporting, they always say that they shot down a lot of stuff. So, you know, maybe they shot down a lot of stuff. Uh, then we have uh, U Russian Defense Ministry also reported uh, in yesterday's report that they have sh destroyed three Sukhoi-25 at the uh, Vosnesensk air base. So Vosnesensk is this, uh, this town, uh, this city over here. This city is if I, uh, this is also the furthest point the Russian forces ever reached. Um, in the in the southern uh, campaign in the beginning of the war, the Russian forces reached all the way here, and then they got wiped. They got wiped out, like entirely wiped out, because uh, they were unsupported and they they straight way too far. Don't know what the commander was thinking, but whatever it is, um, the at this airbase around here, uh, I th I believe. So the I just going to report what they they said. They said that they have engaged three Sukhoi twenty five at the Vonesensk airfield so it could mean anything it can mean uh that the Sukhoi 25 is flying but i don't think so i think they, they simply attacked the Sukhoi 25 on the on the ground uh we will wait for more information uh but i i personally think that it's going to be like three times 20 Sukhoi 25 destroyed at the air base so which is what what which is what i wrote so uh, so let's go to the front lines in the southern front. Uh, there is still reports of uh, fighting reported in along the uh, bridge bridge heads or the beach heads in the southern part of the Dnipro River, and uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry continued to report this on the thirty and the thirty first of March. Russian forces reported that they have attacked uh, Ukrainian forces at Ivanivka, or uh, just just across the river at Prinky. So that's about it over in the southern front. Very very quiet. Uh, over at the Zaporizhia front, uh, there is multiple things happening. So this is the Kayamske sector, Orikiv sector, and the Huyapule sector. As in case you do not know, Zaporizhia city is over here. Uh, over at the Kayamske sector, Russian forces reportedly attack Kayamske as well as Lokove. So uh, this happened, and then uh, over uh, just north south northeast of uh, Stepove, uh, the, there's a D20 Hawk Visor getting destroyed uh, by counter artillery fire. So we'll continue to monitor. Uh, so this this artillery is actually a bit uh, 
near to the front line. So this probably, you know, for direct support. Um, then, then uh, let's see, zoom out a bit. So at the Odekeef sector, fighting is being, still being reported at Robotine. Let's zoom in a, a bit further. At Robotine, there is still Russian attacks being reported at Robotine itself. Uh, there's no details, so you know we can't really tell the, what exactly is happening around there. At uh, Huepilsky, there is a Russian artillery strike on Ukrainian forces, confirming Ukrainian presence uh, at Huepilsky, uh, just off Mernay, which the Russians are holding, and are claimed to have captured on the 17th of March. And uh, we move on. There's, uh, at the Huepilsky sector, we have fighting being reported at uh, Melinivka. Wait, I need to... Shut down my steam. So, uh, so Melanivka is around here. This is Huyai Pole, and the Russian forces attack uh, Melanivka. This is probably just a probing attack or fire fire attack. So, no, nothing uh, serious. So that's all for the Zaporizhia front. Uh, the Velika Nova Circle sector. This Velika Nova Circle, uh, the Donet of the Donetsk front. Uh, the uh, Russian forces continue their attack at uh, Staromayovsky. Ukrainian forces counter attack at Prione. Uh, there is your location of a uh, uh, Russian airstrike on Ukrainian position at Makarivka, and uh, there is also a uh, your location of a failed Russian attack uh, in the south of Uruzaini over here. So uh, this 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 one did not really change the front line. I will explain a bit more. And uh, Crimean Capri also Joe located a Strela 10 anti uh, anti aircraft missile system getting hit just off Novo uh, Novopil. Uh, over here. So at Uruzaini itself, um, if you zoom in a bit, you, uh, you can see that the Joe location is actually just above the tree line, which actually shows that uh, the Russian forces actually have control in the south. They have no control over these tree lines, and I doubt the Ukrainian forces are there as well. And uh, probably Ukrainian forces are in the houses uh, within Uruzaini itself. And uh, as the Russian forces storm in, they got attacked by FPV drone and then they got destroyed. Um, so this was a mad rush style of uh, attack, very similar to the one that we see at uh, Badaichi, the the one that the 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 way how 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 it happens is something I criticized before. Uh, before basically is a, a armor personnel carrier type like a BTR uh, vehicle, and then uh, it just carry infantry and just rush towards a landing point without fire support. And then, and then uh, it, this time around, there is no uh, Bradley's being deployed at Wurzaine. So uh, what they got engaged by FPV drones. So that's about it. So we shall continue to monitor. Uh, I, I just don't like this kind of attack, but maybe there's just a lack of resources on the Russian side to you know, conduct very comprehensive combined arms uh, offensive. So uh, moving into the rest of the Donetsk front over at the Voleda region, there is fighting reported towards Vodian. This Vodian, uh, there's a, a Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported the attack is coming from the east, east of Vodian, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, east of Vodian of the Donetsk region. And then the Russian Defense Ministry con also reported that there is fighting at the Donetsk, uh, sorry, at Vodian, near Vodian. So I'm not sure uh, how to. Uh, interpret this is it the attack coming from the south or coming from the east of course the ukrainian one was a very specific they're talking about attack to from the east i'm not sure if there is an attack coming from the south so we will continue to monitor uh, there is no intel uh, regarding this region much because i think the information is very vague there's a very heavy fog of war around here so we will continue to wait for more information uh, over the marinka sector which is uh from Krasno Horivka stretching all the way down to Novo Mihailivka. This is the uh, Marinka sector. Russian forces continue their attack at Krasno Horivka, at Georgivka, uh, at Bobeda, I believe, and as well as uh, in the Novo Mihailivka region. Did I forgot to change the color? Yeah, I forgot to change the color. Yeah, I remember I mapped Bobeda. So, so this is the Russian attack currently in this situation. Uh, over at Novo Mihailivka, as mentioned in the frontline changes report, the Russian forces continue to uh, attack within the town itself. The attempt to come in the north has been stopped tentatively. So since it, they cannot break through from the north as the Ukrainian forces held the line, the Russian forces attack in the south. So moving southwest of Novo Mihailivka. So which means that the Ukrainian forces only have these few three lines right now uh, to hold the, this, to protect this uh, vital road just south of Paroskovievka. Of course, the Ukrainians can, 
Ukrainians can use Paraskov uh, Yevka to actually you know, resupply and uh, reinforce. So it's not uh, it's not the kind of like a ADFK situation where you know it's one road that dictates everything. So there is still more ways to uh, fight in this area here. But of course, um, situation in the Novo Mihalivka is uh, getting very dire. There is not much left uh, to defend. So the fall of Novo Mihalivka may be soon, but of course it purely depends on the Russians because Russian uh, forces tends to drag things uh, way longer than we expect so so uh so don't have too much hope about you no know, russians are uh, capturing this area here very quickly because um there is no reason to rush if you look towards the rear positions there is still a lot of settlements uh to break and uh yeah this bunch of grapes around here is you no know, it's going to be very bitter. Don't buy it. Um, so uh, over at Bobeda, uh, or Bojeda, there is fighting reported in this area here on the 30th of March, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Not sure which direction, but there is Joe location by Crimea Capris showing that uh, there is some destruction of Ukrainian equipment and forces uh, in the northwestern part of Bobeda. So this could be interpreted as an attack by the Russian forces, so the attack is actually coming towards the southern part of Georgivka, which the Russians are currently also pushing uh, in this area here. They are also attacking within Georgivka. So we will wait and uh, we will wait and monitor and see how this uh, continue to develop. And across uh, Nohorivka uh, in the north, nothing much to talk about. There is just reports of fighting around, around this area here. That's all for the Donetsk front. At the Afghan front, uh, the Ukrainians are conducting uh, counter-offensive operations against the Russian push, but um, I think the Russians have the initiative right now. Russians are attacking at Badaichi, Semenivka, over towards Umanske. At the, let me let me put it. They have uh, allegedly captured Vodian. They are attacking at Povomaiske region and Nevelske. Ukrainian forces counter-attack at Povomaiske, counter-attack Vodian attacking towards Tonenke and uh, Badaichi. So this is the current uh, strategic situation uh, around this front line. Um, so the so let's cover bit bit by bit uh, because the southern I think it, we need to you know uh, go into bit a bit of details in if not it's a bit confusing. So uh, Nevelske nothing much to talk about. Over at Povomaiske as per mentioned in the frontline changes report Russian forces captured the this uh, not this uh, the head of the millipede uh, Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking counter Vodian, probably to stop this. With Russian forces geolocated here, which means that the Russians are pushing towards Netelove, which is over here. Ukrainian forces counter-attack at Povomaiske as well, with the Russian forces continue to uh, put pressure on Povomaiske. So this is, and they're probably also hitting south from the north, given the tra trajectory of uh, where the Russian forces are moving. So the Ukrainians are you no know, desperate uh, at this moment, I believe because uh, Povomaiske looks really vulnerable right now, and uh, because the R Russian forces can also hit into the rear uh, of Povomaiske, and this will result in the battle to be focused uh, in the uh, near Natolove, Natolove, uh, in the northernmost part of Povomaiske, and allow the Russian forces to have an easy path uh, through the actual settlement. And uh, so this this is getting rather bad for the Ukrainian forces and there is also geolocation of uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian forces under fire uh, they are doing rotation and whatnot uh, so that is that also happens uh, so like this so that's all for this uh, Povomaiske Vodian situation we will continue to monitor things are looking bad as well for the Ukrainians I don't know what things looking good for the Ukrainians everything looks bad uh, over at this uh, Tonenke region of what's mentioned in the frontline changes report Russian forces are at, have captured more grounds in the northwestern part of Tonenke heading towards Umanske over here so uh, that's all for this area here uh, nothing much is talked about at uh, Olivka uh, the fighting is at Semenivka so uh, Semenivka is over here. As per I mentioned before in the previous frontline changes report, uh, in the previous uh, SIPRAP, Russian forces are hitting Semenivka from the south through Olivka. So because they secured the crossing around here, uh, the, the, in the Semenivka region here, the, the crossing is you know, along this area, this small little causeway. Uh, is, this is not a good crossing area here. Uh, this is a death trap. So the Russian forces hit, heading from the south 
makes a lot more sense. We will continue to monitor. I think uh, the the attack path is is too narrow, so it's it's a bit hard for the Russian forces to make progress uh, to a significant. And a clash at Badaichi continues with Russian forces continue to push and the Ukrainian forces counterattack in the Badaichi region. And uh, so, yes, uh, previously I mentioned about the Russians using drones, uh, the track drones or robotic drones, whatever you want to call them. And uh, the there is uh, the drones were then attacked by Ukrainian uh, flying drones, uh, FPV drones. And um, so there is... So there is a joke location is actually in Badaichi, as per mentioned, is right here. And uh these drones didn't travel very far, which means that they are you no know, they are experimenting, they are not pushing them right at to the front line yet, which means that these uh track drones are just there to hold position. And uh so based on the video footage, <coughs> which I already published uh oh, oh, noisy. So uh which I published on DPA archive, you can see that uh, there is a drone uh, flying towards the the Russian track drone and then just exploding. So I'm not sure it, it disables the track drone or not, uh, given this level of explosion. But this second drone that was attacked actually come with a much bigger explosion. Uh, so this this one here, the, the explosion is way bigger and the entire track drone just disappeared you know like like instantly vaporized so so yeah so you can actually check out the dpa archive uh, if you're interested so going back to the zoom okay so uh so it's here the like i mentioned the location of the fight the attack which is currently uh very a bit of a distance from the front line shows that uh, this this is just an attempt at using the drone to hold position. So because if you use human beings, uh, human beings will be wiped out by the FPV drone as well. Uh, but you will lose manpower and then um, it costs a lot more for the Russian state to actually pay the 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 family as well as you know the demoralizing factor on the Russian troops that is you know in the same unit that that you know have troops and being sent to as cannon folders to hold lines. I think using the drones to hold the line makes a lot of sense. And then the Ukrainians, so this this will happen. This will, this is going to be modern warfare. There's going to this is not just the future. The future is now. And the more as we move forward, we're going to see a lot more of this kind of thing. And then uh, drones holding the line makes a lot more sense as cannon fodder than human beings. And we're going to see a lot more of this. And it's going to come back to the Ukrainian side. You know, in the future, they'll have to decide. Do they hit manpower or do they hit this kind of drones that is not alive? Uh, wasting resources on these drones uh, do not reduce the firepower of the Russian side. But at the same time, if you don't take them out, these drones can still move forward and cause problems for your troops. So this is going to be a very uh, difficult division for commanders coming now and towards the future. Uh, the division to add to actually hit drones, you no, know, these track drones or the robot robotic army. Let's let's call them robots. To hit all these robots, or do you want to hit manpower? You know, go fly your drone further to the rear to find the soft targets. So it's gonna be so difficult to decide. And and I think the decision to use them as a cannon fodder to hold ground is gonna be so useful for the Russian way of fighting. Because the Russians uh, prefer attritional warfare, prefer artillery warfare. But you know, if you don't hold ground, then it's going to be difficult to move forward. So using uh, robots to hold ground makes so much sense. It's going to change warfare. I think warfare is already now changed. So uh, this is fascinating stuff. And uh, over in the north of Stepove, just not, uh, near Novo Bamutivka, TOS-1A attack. This I do not know this is how many times I've thought about this. The the Tomoberry missiles keep attacking the same place, and I'm I'm starting to wonder if they are the same footage. I didn't see the footage. I simply reported on the Joe location. We will continue to monitor, and I'll see how this progress. Over at the New York front, uh, things get a lot more busier around this area here. Uh, Russians are attacking uh Alex Alexandropil, uh towards New York, as well as in the area of Mayors. Ukrainian forces counter attack in the region of Pivdeni. So this is the current uh, situation in the New York front. Is um, 
a bit unusual. I think the Russians counter attack is just simply to you know, counter the Ukrainian uh, uh, attacks because the Ukrainians have been probing in this area here and maybe there is an accumulation of manpower that Russians want to you know, distract or to you know, reduce in this area here. So that's all from the New York front. Over at the southern half of the Bakhmut front, Russian forces attack at Klitschievka and Adriavka as well as Kudyomivka. Uh, there is still location of FPV drone attacking Ukrainian infantry fighting vehicle south of Klitschievka. So warfare really has changed. Like the the you, you in the past, you know, you can have an infantry fighting vehicle holding a certain area here, and uh, they were able to uh no protect against a huge radius uh and like no cause problems and any troops that want to move forward will have to really plan out uh, how to attack they, they need armor they need artillery and whatnot maybe coordinate an airstrike helicopter attack but no now they just use the fbb drone and take out a major you no know, uh, uh vehicle or equipment that is there to hold a position uh, a whole very strategic position so you no know, warfare have, has changed like really has changed uh i'm really not sure how to fight this kind of war <laughs> so you no know, let's hope that there is some uh, real-time strategy game uh, that will appear to let us you know experience and see how 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 does you no know, modern warfare gonna work moving forward so and uh, in the northern half of uh, the Bakhmut front, Russian forces are attacking at Budanivka. They are attacking towards Chasifia, probably in the Novi region, as well as Ivaniski. And the fact that the U Russian Defense Ministry actually reported fighting at Krasnoye, uh, which is Ivaniski, shows that uh, there are reports of their claims that they have captured uh, Krasnoye, which is over here on the 23rd of March, is absolutely premature. And uh, we shall continue to monitor and see how this goes. Um, and uh, that's all for the Bakhmut front. At the Sivas front, uh, there is fighting being reported at Bilohorivka at the Luhansk region. This is usual. And then we have reports of fighting at Vakam Okanyamsky, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So that's all. We do not know much more about this area here. So let me zoom out uh, to see if I miss anything. So that's all for over the criminal front. The usual continues with fighting at Terni region. The two forces clash at Terni. And uh, so that's all for the criminal front. Nothing at the Sviatovay front. We move into the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, there is just one report of uh, Russian Defense Ministry reporting that the Ukrainians attack at Sinkivka. Did, did they attack? Uh, did the Russians attack? No, the Russians did not attack. So only one one attack at Sinkivka. Looks like the Kupians front is going to sleep. So moving into the border regions, uh, there is a geolocation of, of the artillery shelling of Ukrainian forces uh, just off the border at the uh, near Nikotivka uh, over here. So there's some, some shelling of Ukrainian forces hiding in the buildings. Uh, that, that is within Ukrainian territory. And further up north, uh, over in the Sumi region. In the Sumi region, uh, again, the Russian forces reportedly attacked the uh, Stara Huta, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So, Stara Huta is over here, or Stara Huta. So, there is some probing uh, by, by the Russian forces uh, into this area here, probably taking advantage of the forest region to conduct ambushes. So, the uh, Ukrainian uh, Defense Ministry uh, reported about this. So, that's all for this uh, Sumi region and that's it. So this is the summary for the day of 766 to 767 for the 30th to 31st of March. Uh, I, In my mapping, I kind of messed up. Uh, I accidentally somehow, don't know what I did, This deleted the 28th of March or, or 27th of March. 27th of March mapping. Uh, I don't... I'm, I think it's because I opened two two tabs of the mapping and then kind of messed up it, uh, and then caused an overwrite or something. So no, yeah. So yeah, I lost the mapping. So the only thing left is the zebra on the on the on the video platforms. But anyway, uh, I wish you guys a happy Easter, uh, Easter Monday, I would say, and uh, and then also you know, happy April Fool's Day. Today is the first of April. And uh, yeah, it's April. Time flies. And uh, <laughs> yeah, quite depressing. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this month, YouTube will treat me better and uh, spread the videos. 
far and wide. And I'll see you guys in the next update.